I want to consider in more detail the super threshold speech recognition measures, in particular the word recognition measures, and introduce you to a performance intensity function. Now, in standard audiometrics, the word recognition scores may be obtained at just one level. Uh, for instance, we may present the signals at 30 dB SL, 40 dB SL, relative to the, the pure tone average. So if an individual's pure tone average is 20 dB HL, uh, we may present the test stimuli, the words, at 60 dB hearing level. The text does describe some of the problems uh, with just presenting speech stimuli at a single level. Uh, namely, you might not be finding out the maximum performance of that listener. However, I'll be interested to see if in your audiologic observations, if speech recognition scores are just obtained at one level. Assuming that we were to obtain speech rec scores at more than one level, we could graph out the function, uh, namely how the percent correct changes as a function of the level at which the speech is presented. Obviously, if we presented the, the speech at 0 dBHL, which you'll recall is audiometric 0, the threshold of hearing in a group of young, normal hearing listeners, we wouldn't expect there to be any recognition of the scores, or of the words, rather. As we increase the level at which we present the speech signal, performance would improve. In a normal hearing individual, we typically receive max performance around 30 decibels hearing level to 40 decibels hearing level. Um, hence, that's why oftentimes audiologists will present the word rec level at 30 dB, 40 dB SL uh, relative to the, the normal hearing threshold there at 0 dB HL. Now, the issue is whether or not that's most efficacious for listeners with hearing loss. And again, that um, explains somewhat as to, as somewhat as why the authors recommend you test uh, speech recognition at more than one level. So again, as we increase the, the level of the speech signal, you see this listener's performance, let's say their ability to repeat back monosyllabic words, um, improves until they reach a maximum, PB max, at approximately 30 dBHL. Um, once they hit their maximum performance then, regardless of how much um, louder or how we increase the speech signal, performance remains at a maximum. We can also look at PI functions and listeners with different types of hearing loss. Now these are all simulated, obviously individual listeners would show slightly different uh, PI functions. Uh, function A is similar to what we saw back here, an idealized function for a normal hearing listener. Function B is what we might expect in a listener with conductive hearing loss. Now what you should notice and what's most evident from function A to function B is that the overall shape of the function is identical, however it's shifted further to the right, which means that that listener requires a increased level to obtain the same score uh, compared to the normal hearing listener. And this is to be expected in a listener with conductive hearing loss, where the site of lesion is either the outer or the middle ear, and the primary problem is one of conduction, not one of transduction or changing the signal into an electrical form. So once you're able to get over the conductive loss, the attenuation loss, the listener's ability to recognize speech signals is not impacted or impaired. But it is important to understand the mechanics behind why the, the overall function is shifted towards the right. Now in function C, this may be a function from somebody with a cochlear hearing loss. Some notable things about function C, again it's shifted further to the right, um, presumably there uh, is more hearing loss let's say, but perhaps the, the main finding and the main difference between functions A and function B is that this listener never reaches a PB max of 100%. Um, the highest speech 
recognition score that this listener receives is 80% when speech is presented at a level of 70 dBHL. Okay, so PB max um, is not perfect in this case. It's um, only 80%. Function D also shows uh, a listener who maybe again with a, a sensory neural hearing loss. Um, at 70 dBHL, this listener reaches a PB max of 76%. And notice here that as we start to increase the, the signal beyond 70 dBHL, performance actually deteriorates a little bit. Now this deterioration is not significant. However, in function E, the deterioration from PB max as we increase the signal level beyond that at which we obtain PB max is significant. Um, this is something we term rollover, and this is useful in the differential diagnosis of sensory from neural hearing losses, how PB max changes as we increase the presentation level. And let me skip ahead here. Here is a function. This is essentially if we were to replot um, function E from the previous figure. You see we obtain a PB max at roughly 70 dBHL, a uh, score of 64%. However, as we increase the intensity level beyond that, uh, let's say to 90 dBHL, PB max deteriorates to 38%. In the, the unit, I talked to you about how to calculate the rollover ratio or rollover index. So we would take our PB max, which is 64 in this case, minus the PB min. Again, PB min happens after our PB max value, which is 38, um, dividing it that quantity by 64 again, our PB max. And that results in a rollover index or rollover ratio of 0.41. And as I talk about in the unit, any rollover index greater than 0.4 is clinically significant and might be indicative of retrocochlear pathology. Now if I go back to this graph just for a second, I want you to think about some of the reasons that we don't achieve 100% um, performance in a listener with a, a sensory loss. Remember, with sensory loss, there's not only attenuation of the speech signal, but there could be deterioration or distortion of the speech signal um, given cochlear changes. In the unit, I talk about uh, very briefly how frequency selectivity and impaired frequency selectivity can impair the internal representation of a speech signal. So even when the, the signals are presented at a loud enough level or an intense enough level, to use the physical term, the listener still may have difficulty understanding it. Um, I'm sure you are all um, can think of a time when you've heard somebody say, I can hear you, but I can't understand you. And this is a very common problem with cochlear pathology. So you should revisit from your hearing science class some of the issues in superthreshold processing that occur with cochlear hearing loss, namely frequency deterioration, frequency uh, selectivity is deteriorated, maybe temporal processing is also deteriorated.